This is the John Hallett Podcast with John Hallett. It's because the way we're living, we need to change it, make a change today. And we all learn from failure. Maybe they just wanted it a little bit more than you. That's probably the fact. And now your host, John Hallett. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me again. Sorry if I uh, don't sound the same. I am battling a sinus infection. been sick all week feeling crappy, but we're going to battle through this thing. And uh, I'm going to laugh at Josh because he's funny. And, uh, <laughs> Listen to me. That's the best I've felt all week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I was listening. Like, I'm just doing my... I'm not even... I'm not in there. Keep going. Monologue. Stuff. Monologue. He's doing his radio stuff over there. He cracks me up. So, been another uh, good week, basically. Uh, some good training going on, yeah. as always. And, you know, springtime, you got to get on it, people. Now, we just, I was just talking to a buddy of mine that just so many people that need it don't want to do anything. Any type of training, whether it's even just basic exercise to doing a martial art, whatever it may be, whatever fits you. Um, and your lifestyle, what, what, you know, what are you thinking? You know, one thing, uh, that I think of is when society breaks down, where are you going to be? I don't want to be left unprepared. I want to be positive, but man, there's some people that they're going to go down in the first wave. (laughs) Good positive start, buddy. I'm positive for me, not for you. I mean, I'm positive like you're going down in the first wave. You have no skill. But I feel okay about myself. Maybe the second wave for myself. I don't know. Do you think fat zombies run slower? No, they run faster. No. They don't have fat to burn it. <laughs> They're energy. running off of fat. I mean, what are zombies actually powered off? I don't know. They're just going. Do they survive the it's winter? Fat. It's fat. They're burning fat. Zombies burn fat. That's what they're like. That's their energy. You just wrote an entire like narrative for a book where zombies have to eat to survive. (laughs) Write it, John. Write it. Write it. Uh, You ever thought about sci-fi noveling? Maybe. Do it. Uh, But you know, there's all sorts of scenarios from the grid down, like things that people don't want to think about. But I want to be healthy and strong, and that's going to help. If you're just in a natural disaster, whatever yeah. it may be, you know, somebody I've been following lately, uh, on YouTube is what is it? Suspicious, uh, observer, the sun guy, sun guy. Yeah. He does a daily sun report, the suspicious observer. I could be getting his YouTube channel wrong. I kind of like the name that. though. Yeah. It's pretty groovy. Uh, yeah. Suspicious observers. And, you know, if you just do, like, the Sun Report or the Sun Guy on YouTube, he does uh, space weather, all sorts of things. He's been, you know, the the magnetic pole shifts, things that have happened. Yeah. That, uh, what if that happens? You know, that's going to affect, I like your look. That's going to affect. I'm going to bring my face in. Oh, now. don't bring your face Okay, in. well, okay, I'm making a no, face. I'm him hawing because there's been a lot. Uh, I can't mute that. Cool. That's but, uh. Right. There's been a lot of pull changes in the past. Yeah. You know, it's happened a lot. And has it been catastrophic? I don't know. Now, when it comes to weather satellites, satellites, clocks, atomic clocks, all those weird things, anything that might deal with electromagnetism might be affected. I don't know. It could be a disaster or we just kind of watch this blink up and nothing happened. Right? So, I mean, there's all sorts of... What ifs. What ifs. I mean, there could be a solar flare. That I'm more afraid of, yeah. Knockout stuff. I mean, the poles have shifted over time. So it's kind of interesting, you know, space weather affecting our weather and different science that's out there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's always good to be looking at stuff. Yeah, a polyon's on its way. That was a comet that'll move between our satellites and Earth. That's how close it's going to be, at least some satellites, which is scary, right? But it's a comet. If that were to just... It's not a zero chance that a comet hits you, right? Yeah, there's just zero chance of whatever could happen. And it hit, let's say... Political unrest. Yeah. I mean, look Tornadoes. At, people freak out. So yeah. I want to be prepared. No matter what. Yeah. You know, have some martial arts skill. Be able to defend yourself. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous that how many people just have zero skill. Like, I, hey, you're doing a martial art. At least you're doing something. Yeah. Does it fit your lifestyle? You know, what's your, what's your interest? You know, I'm not a big... 
competition sport thing. I think that's what happens to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one thing I didn't like about CrossFit. It's why one of the reasons I was pushing to drop mm. the brand CrossFit for a long time because it just got too competitive. And that's great, test yourself, but people would cheat the movement. Yeah. And now they're not. Now they're doing just crap movement. Like stay true to the movement versus now competitions affecting it. And just the way even just sometimes people do burpees would drive me crazy. So not, I mean, competition's a great Guilty. thing, but it also can be a bad thing. It can be yeah. a bad thing in martial arts that yeah. you're yeah like you're training for a competition, and it's not out in the street. That's not the rules, and different things can happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you always reminded me is that we're training for the real stuff, like the real things that's going to happen. And even that, you're going, oh, am I training enough? Is sure. it the right, you know, what are going to be the odds of some what, what's coming at me? That's why I do like, you know, our Citizen Defender program is uh, based off of, Josh, you're so funny, <laughs> uh, off of Todd Fossey's stuff from Integrated Defense Strategies. You know, and playing odds of things that happen to civilians out mm-hmm. there that are carrying a firearm. What are your odds? You know, I think, you know, our buddy Eric j- that we were just rolling around with this morning. Um, I lost my train of thought. What are the odds of uh, these things happening to you? You know, he uh, he had said, oh, in my head, I always had more time to draw that firearm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We always have more time. And we don't always have more time. And, and that's a difficult thing, thinking, well, I'm just going to go in my purse and I'm going to pull out my gun. Odds are you got ambushed. And now trying to draw that firearm out of your fanny pack, out of your purse, oh, man, you know, that's tough stuff. Yeah, what if they're stealing your purse? You know, women's attire is really hard for concealed oh, yeah. carry if they're, you know, got the kind of, you know, so typical look that so many women have of the, you know, yoga pants or whatever. And right. It's a lot tougher to carry that firearm. Yeah. So yeah. it's all hard things. You know, I go, I hope I'm traded enough. What are the odds? What's going to come at me? If I have a crystal ball, that'd be great. You go, all right, I need to prepare for this scenario. Mm-hmm. And we can't prepare for, you know, a known scenario. We've got to prepare for it all different things come at us. Mm-hmm. So, but we wanted to talk about before we get too off track, mistakes in martial arts or mistakes um, school owner might make. Uh, the new newbie. The beginner, yeah, certainly. You know, being new to martial arts of what mistakes are just so common out there for new people. My, I'll tell you what my first mistake was and that was not trying sooner not trying sooner yeah that was my first mistake right and i think i'm not alone in that right yeah i think there's a lot of people a lot of people hold back yeah and uh i still have a lot of self-doubt about what i do so i doubt myself when i'm on that floor doing things yeah i think that's the big you know probably maybe my number one or you know one or two you know, people doubt that they can do it, so they don't try. So you didn't even get in the door. And that's a huge one. But once you're on the floor, it is like people get down on themselves similar that they're failing, they messed up, they didn't feel like they, you know, were good at the technique in the first minute, five mm-hmm. minutes of doing mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. that they think they're just going to have it. That's where, I, you know, for years I'm like, good, you're doing good. And sometimes the more advanced, oh, they're going to do this and that. Like, they're doing good. Yeah. Like, I'm guilty. everybody, guilty. Uh, who do this, do this. Guilty. Oh, and, and, and get, and, 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 and. But they're off, you know, they're trotting down the road. They're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. That it's not going to be perfect. They've got to just get that part down, down. Good, good, good. Keep progressing through. But... You know, the beginner instructor can make the mistake of giving too much correction, kind mm-hmm. of on the same path. You know, a new instructor, it's like somebody's just be patient with them. Hey, they're off. They're doing okay. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's hard. 
people get really down on themselves that oh, I to should it. be learning this faster. Yeah. And you're doing great. Failure's part of it. Yeah, it's required. It's it's okay. And you know, I've had people like, I wanna quit because I'm slowing down the class. You're doing fine. Everybody messes up. Just stay. Just keep going. So you know, and sometimes it's over teaching. Mm. Like, oh it's fine. It's good. Whatever we're doing. We're doing something I had a group of black belts, and we were reviewing for testing. We had a white belt that wasn't uh, up for testing. And we were doing some stuff, and Nick wanted to show more. I'm like, no, it's fine. Dude, he's here. I was like, hey, I shouldn't be kicking him over. He shouldn't just even be reviewing with the other white belts, even though he's not testing. But for whatever reason, I brought him over here. Hey, he's with this group of black belts discussing things. We don't need to show him all this stuff. Let me show you. I'm like, no, he's fine. Three days later, he writes a review on Google about the experience. It was great that he was playing around with these black belts. We didn't teach him anything. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. like, just leave him alone. He's fine. Let him figure it out. If like, That's great. Just let it happen. We don't need to show him anything else. Already he's in over his head. Mm-hmm. We don't need to now show him a tech. Like, mm-hmm. let's. We can't get you up to speed. Mm-hmm. You can't make up in five minutes for five years of training. Yeah. Yeah. But he did learn. He was watching. He did he see. Fun. And he had a great it's time. It's a good experience. And that's really what it's turned into me because not only am I training, I'm getting stuff. I'm having a great time here. I've made a lot of friends and I I love what I do. Like I really love what I do here. I told you once. I was like, I, I want to know what I want to do for the rest of my life, John, that's train here with you. Yeah. And that was that. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's so great yeah. when somebody gets that spark right away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I got it right away. You know, I was, I was having a lot of self doubt, man. I really was. Like, I don't. Yeah, that's. I was biggest, that person. That's such a big problem. Yeah, it's such a big problem. I don't belong here is what I kept telling myself. Yeah. Well, it, it's just the opposite. You do belong here, right? That's that's why we want you here. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get, if you want to learn, you just have to keep coming to the door. Yeah. You know, that's sometimes maybe another mistake of just failure to come in the door again and again and again. Again. If you just keep opening up the door and keep coming in, you're going to get better. Yeah. Slow and steady. I've seen some, like, honestly, unathletic people get really good by just coming in the door time and time again. And, you know, that's, that's tough. You know, it's, you know, even as an instructor. Yeah. That, okay, that class didn't go again didn't go well all right do it again how can i improve right. you know that happens a lot with kids like things get off the rails in a kid's <laughs> class so fast like you know and then sometimes it's fun i like like messing around with the kids and you know seeing their little personalities like actually we were doing touch uh something i don't even know what we were doing we might have doing some ground stuff um and i told the kids like anybody what, what are you guys drinking these days uh what are you guys drinking at the table? What are you drinking for dinner? You know, water. And they're like, kids like, you know, milk or whatever. And so kid goes, beer. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh God, you're going to, he's probably like eight or nine. Right. And, and, like, eight. and I was just like, <laughs> beer. I'm like, is your mother over there? Is your father over there? And he's totally like, he's getting, he's like, IBC. Uh... <laughs> like, like you're gonna be a funny little guy like you're a little kid you got a sense of humor he knew he was gonna get me by saying beer right yeah. like i'm drinking beer at dinner um but it was like you're you're not knocking over your cup you have enough control you're not a little yeah. toddler knocking you need a sippy cup yeah you can reach out and grab the salt you should sure. be able to reach out and touch your partner without smashing them in the face um and going too hard mm-hmm. but you, know, you get off the rails, like, oh, I'm not good at teaching this. You know, some instructors yeah. will avoid it instead of just keep going and going. Yeah. You know, I think it's one benefit uh, of having a kids program is I'll use the kids to do it because sometimes they forget. It's less pressure sometimes, even in teenager class, of just teaching things that I'm not good at yeah. and getting better over the years. I mean, I did that a ton. Um, coming up through Kravaga now, like, you know, with Citizen Defender stuff, I do that with the kids. I'll teach with the kids because it's good reps. And yeah. their kids, sometimes you got to bring them in again. They thought, you know, they weren't really paying attention. Sure. 
um, and then it uh, ends up being uh, a good learning. I just do it again and again. Sure, they, sure. they think they're easy, but can you mute me? No. Oh, I'm gonna try my best here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm muting John's mic. Go for it. Oh. Okay, maybe. Okay, I'll get it in post. What's that? I'll get it in post. post. Yeah, sorry. I, I am not feeling 50. good. Uh, super congested. Yeah, you're a tough son of a gun. Uh, it's really fun yeah. to watch the kids sometimes because they show you things that, I mean, they figure things out sometimes. I was like, whoa. Like, wow. You know? There, there's a lot to learn from watching kiddos just trying to figure something out, which is what I should be, like a kid on that floor. Yeah, there's so many trying things to work that it kids out. do, that the adults do, yeah. and little things. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes kids don't care if they fail. Yeah. Right. They're just trying stuff, like uh, they're just doing it. There's no They'll ego give it a in try. There. Yeah. Um, but that's all. Self doubt. Who? You, you, it's it's a killer. Oh, it, right? it's doubting a, yourself. Oh, doubting yourself. Yeah. You got to just be positive. You know, you got to have this kind of warrior mentality of, oh, yeah. I can do this. I'm awesome. I've got this. I'm winning. You know, something that we're always trying to instill. In people like you're winning the fight, you're mm-hmm. winning the fight mm-hmm. mentally. You screwed up, but you're still winning. You're still winning. Yeah, yeah. You know that's a mistake that newbies do. We could do it as an advance of just getting pissed off at yourself, mm-hmm. going, "I screwed that one up. Crap, let's do it again." But wait a second, you just screwed up in a real fight. You can't mm-hmm. ask for timeout and let, right. let's start over. Of just flowing through that, like who cares? I messed just up. Move on. Mm-hmm. Keep. Keep running the drill, the scenario, whatever you're doing. Work off of that. Where beginners all the time are like, oh, I messed up. Like, no, just keep going from there. Right. Throw a punch. Move away from them. There's Do no, something. Right. There's no harm in it. I mean, just keep moving. Like, it's that's all I kept thinking was more. Like, keep, keep, keep it up. Keep it up. Do something. Do something. Do something. That's what I keep telling in my head. Do something. Yeah. Just right. do something. Who cares? It's not you always right. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of not rights, but sometimes you get those ones where it's like. It works. Yeah. And it opens your eyes and you're like, holy smokes, I can keep coming back to this, right? Yeah. In the same way. So that's... I think I just had a video on Clear Sky uh, dot training on YouTube that uh, a guy tested for camo belt for us is uh, um, he messed up, choked from the side. Yeah. And I don't even know if at the time that he, he realized he ripped the hand off of his throat with the wrong hand, but he just kept going. Like, yeah, he was ready. Yeah. He was like, I'm in the fight. Yeah. You're like, good. Maybe you didn't even realize you screwed up until you see that right. video. Maybe you did. You're like, but he kept going. So you're like, yeah. Good. Right. You're right. That's the thing. Just like, keep good on job. Playing. You just, you didn't stop. Yeah. You screwed something up. You can't ask for time out. Right. I and mean, nothing's perfect out there. I mean, everybody wants to. That was the other thing is, that, you know, that fight to be perfect. And that's another beginner mistake for everybody is because if you're always driving for perfection, it's going to be hard to reach it. And I, you know, yeah. I was told a long time ago, strive for excellence. Just try to be as good as you can, right? Yeah. Because that's going to be more useful to me. Yeah. And that's my thinking on it, right? Just try to be good. Yeah. Keep doing it, right? Yeah. Do it. Practice makes permanent. I forget who. That was a That's a really guy. good statement. I like that. <coughs> oh, who was that? I'm going to forget the guy's name. Uh, CrossFit weightlifting guy. Practice. Or Olympic, Olympic lifting. Practice makes uh, permanent. Bergener, is that what it is? What's his name? He's super up there. I think it's Berger. Um, had says that practice makes permanent. He's right, though. I mean, that's, yeah, it's just, really good statement. I mean, that's that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's so easy to get caught up in trying to be perfect. That's that whole teaching girls to be brave. That yeah. everything's got to be perfect. That's you know that's a TED talks if you don't know yeah. that's a great uh, great listen teaching girls to be brave and just striving for, like I'm not gonna try because I'm not gonna be perfect at it I don't okay yeah. like who cares and yeah. some people don't want to start a martial art like oh, I'm not gonna be good at it I want to be awesome at it everybody wants to be awesome yeah but you have to suck to get awesome right. But people have in their head they're going to be just phenomenal, right? You're going to jump in a race car and you're going to be freaking awesome. Right. No, I mean, you're, gonna bite the, you're probably going to bite the wall and spin out. I mean, your bike had training wheels. Not a lot of people just got on the bike. Yeah, 
And then uh, yeah. I'll, I'll just get it in post. Go. Ah! <laughs> That's my marker. <laughs> That's your marker. It's my marker. But, that, you know, that it's like you, you, you have to be a beginner at something, and you realize to get okay at it's the next step, right? You don't get to awesome without being okay. Hey, yeah. And better, right? I mean, it's why you always say, just get better. Yeah, and that's just really good. good. Right. Just keep working it, keep right. working it. And that's where people, you know, so then they plateau and people can't fight through the plateau. Yeah. You know, it's a letdown sometimes. Yeah. You, know, you get your black belt and there's a letdown there of like, oh, I've been training for this. And now, oh, it was like, I was training and like looking forward to being 50. And now at 50, I'm like, that's not so exciting. I was like really excited to be 50. And now 52 yesterday. Congratulations. And I'm like, another year. Dealing with you. Fuck. Well, you, you should get you, a medal. Do you know how, like if we go watch our original videos and your videos now, I have given you nothing but gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All this gray in the beard. So and that was the other gosh. thing, like hitting 40 is when the gray in the beard started showing up. Like, I don't have it up here, but I was like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, it's there. It's there. You're like, it's not there. I'm like, well, it's there a little bit. Like, that's why I keep the hair long, right? And hides it. Yeah. Hide the, hide the gray. As long as the gray stays underneath. Yeah. But, but that's a letdown, you know, just yeah. coming up with a new goal. And even as new black belts, they don't realize there's so much growth on what you already quote, no, yeah. but you were training for. And you're just a first degree. Yeah. And there's such the, what is the word, like, not persona, but so, what's the word, like, around black belt? Mystique, what is um, that? There's a mystique, right? You get there and you think that this is the place I've gotten to and this is where it was all coming to a head and you stop. Like, And if you look at, you know, martial arts throughout history, all of those masters were like, now your training starts. But people have such a letdown because they were training for it. You're like, okay, now you're training for second degree. But there can be that letdown of thinking that they now they have it all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, when now your mm -hmm. training is ready to start in that, you know, expert uh, level of training. Yeah. And working through those plateaus, there's so much growth that come out of those just yeah. plugging through, even as, you know, the school owner, a lot of times you're you know, plugging through when it seems to be a, a turnover of beginners, 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 and like trying to grow your school to where you have more advanced people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's such a challenge. I mean, I moved, I don't even know how many years into Krav Maga I was. It wasn't that many. Mm -hmm. I moved, what belt was I when I got to Colorado? I had to be going on blue, maybe. Mm -hmm. So... Because I definitely did my green belt in New York, upstate New York. So it's definitely like probably maybe I got my blue. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but somewhere in around there. And I had, you know, had a, a decent base for, you know, little tiny Nantucket Island of, quote, people that were more advanced. And now you're starting over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, moving. And now it's just beginners 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 of and we know that's always a wash right mm -hmm. if if we could just keep the people that came in the door for yellow belt you know there'd be no need for marketing and mm -hmm. all this other crap but there's that turnover because people doubt themselves because they let life get in the way yeah and that's really hard you know of building that school back up building building and people move and it's just plugging through and battling that. Oh gosh, I just we want to have this advanced program, but you it takes time to get people up to that level to sure. have an advanced program. Yeah, especially for, I was listening to a talk by Steve Jobs, an old interview from like I want to say around the early '90s. This is after he had reacquired his company, right? And he said that there's this disease of thinking that you can just jump into something and expect to get something out of it right like with a product or a place and what he started describing is that it was the journeys and finding the little bits and pieces inside of that journey where you started getting an idea from a fleshed out idea to something that's built and then you run into problems which means there's a new level of growth 
and whatever that is. And every time you run into that obstacle, there's a new opportunity to grow and make something better. And I thought, well, that's why Apple did so well under his tutelage, right? It, it was the journey. Yeah. It was the journey all the way. Yeah, definitely. It's even as, you know, a school owner, you're trying to start a school. I think it's a, a, probably the number one mistake is people think it's all going to be fun. Oh, yeah. But you have just as many hours running the business. Oh, yeah. Oh. Of what it takes to run that school. And so many people get caught up in, you know, maybe somebody's just in this sweet spot and it's like all easy, right? Like, wow, these people are making a ton of cash selling guns online. They're not carrying any inventory, but they're making a ton of money. Well, how many people are doing that? Were they in at the right time? Mm. Do they have the quote algorithm? Are they coming up first? Now you're all going to do the same thing. And now you're at the bottom of the freaking pie. You're on page four of Google. Who's ever been to the fourth page of a Google search? They call that Google black hole. Because <laughs> yeah. once you're down there, like you never come out, right? Like there's martial arts schools like that. They're just everything kind of sometimes seems easy. Mm-hmm. And like, oh yeah, my friend opened a school. Oh, it's going to be easy. It's not always. Right. Do payroll. You know, the fun <laughs> part of it, you've got to run the business and do everything else involved in that business. And a lot of times it's you in every seat. Yeah, you've worn every hat. So you've gone everything from marketing to the janitor to the street sweeper out front, right? It, it, when it's your business, you are usually it most of the time, right? And it's, yeah. It's, it falls on you. If something is failing, you either have to prop it up or you're unlikely to succeed, right? Yeah. And that blows my mind the amount of work that goes into running a gym. So Yeah, it's, it's not a tough all biz, man. It's the a tough fun biz. part. I think yeah. a lot of people think, oh, it's just fun. Oh, what do you do? You're just teaching classes all day. Uh, and you got to make phone calls. And you got to deal with yeah. everything else right. in any other business. And going, yeah. you know, not getting taken advantage of by ads. You know, that's one thing. Mm. Um, over the years of just your marketing and you get caught up in things. I mean, it's the whole uh, scam that some companies do that you're... They pl- play to business owners and saying you're uh, not visible on Google. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're like, yeah. your business is not eligible. <laughs> and you're like, you're not coming up. And you're like, what? And it's just a total scam yeah. that they're saying they can't find you. And the business owner panics and like, oh, i got to do this. I'll pay you. And then you pay them money and then you realize it was just. Yeah. And so many. Of predators them. going after your money as a business, which yeah. is kind of crazy. Mean, that, like scam. Wow. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Even the amount of companies that do, like, say they're going to do something and then they really don't do anything. It's really kind of... Yeah. There's so many marketing companies that are like, here's the template, and then they tell you to pay them more money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After they originally said, whatever, $500 a month. Right, more spend. We're going to get your leads, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm not getting the leads. I've been paying you guys for three months, six months. And they're like, well, you're going to have to up your... Spends. Your spend is what... Like, I'm going to go into the company line. and go, just up your spend, up your spend, up your spend. You've just described. That they kind of template stuff, and they they build it out. You might get a little spark because that's ah, a little bit better, but then it's kind of a set and forget that they don't do crap on your, on your page. Whatever it is, your website, your Google listing, whatever it is. So many companies are out there, and they're crap. There's tons of them. Yeah, every marketing agency is using the same tools. It's all Google stuff, right? Except now you're paying them because they, they've convinced <coughs> you, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But so, you know, here I am as the marketer saying, <laughs> more spends, right? And yeah, that's what they do. Spend more money. Spend, spend more, more money. money. It's like, yeah, it's kind of the, uh, hey, Josh, you're not that good. Oh, do, do more private lessons. Do more private lessons. <laughs> I knew that day was coming. <laughs> you should do more private lessons. Oh. And no, I mean, private lessons are really good. You get a lot of one-on-one. But, you know, there are people out there that just push that. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, geez, you know, I should take some private lessons. I, I, I kind of like going up against different people sometimes because I want to, you know, someone's taller than the other one, heavier, shorter, wilier, right? They get yeah. squirrely on you and it's like, 
those are fun to f- just feel out yeah. that person in the fight. Yeah, and I think uh, well, one last one, especially for the beginner, is just overtraining it can be a mistake. Being just too excited, they burn themselves out. Right, they're training too much, and they kind of burn themselves out. They really? overdo it. So they're kind of like, like two days a week, three days a week, five, five days a week, and two then is nothing. Um, but they're all excited, and they haven't done anything, and then they hurt themselves. Uh-huh. They overtrain or they get an injury because their their body wasn't ready for doing five days a week of anything, yeah. and it's just overdoing uh-huh. it. You're just okay. excited. You got to throttle yourself back sometimes. So, okay, I need a rest day, but they okay. don't. They just get too excited. They either burn out sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just too much for their family, for themselves, whatever it Makes may sense. be. Uh, but that's a super common one. Hear, so you see a gamut of it all. Yeah, you? there's a ton of them. So guys, we're gonna wrap it up here because I'm not feeling great. A couple things for you, and you know, it's springtime. Get out there, clean your house, get in shape, get off the couch, stop making excuses, get out there, do something, suck less, and train some more. All right, guys, we are out of here.